Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of Mamoto GP19 Career Mode here today. This time we are here for round number 14 for the Aragon GP. If you guys missed round 13, the last episode at Mizano, then check out the race, guys, by clicking on the card in the top right hand corner of your screen before we get into any further spoilers. Now, for this race here at Aragon, it's a bit of a mixed track for me. I've struggled in the past, but I've also had some very good races, so it's a bit of a, mi a mixed bag for me around this circuit. In terms of the championship, you can see that we are in second place behind Andrea Dovizioso in the championship and it's still very much a four-way fight but in the last couple of races Vinales and Marquez um, have just dropped off a little bit especially in the last race where they both crashed so things have kind of you know originally it was a two horse race they went to a four and that's kind of gone back to a two but I think Marquez and Vinales are still within reach considering there's still five whole races left with that being said though the pressure is on and we need to try and not let Dovi get too far ahead and for this race we've rung in the changes we put on so many upgrades for the bike for this race guys and this is the current development tree for this season on the bike and this should give us a big upgrade boost going into this race having a lot more performance and just generally being a lot more competitive now first of all we're going to jump into Friday practice make sure that we hit our practice programs and make sure we score maximum points there and then we will transition into qualifying, or should I say transition to a lap that's good enough to go into qualifying, more specifically into Q2, so that way we can jump straight into the, into the main major part of qualifying. With that being said, let's jump into it here and let's see how it goes. First of all though, let's tackle practice. Okay, so midway through FP1, the test is now done. I actually had an incident on all three laps pretty much and uh, I still beat the actual time that I have to beat but I had incidents on all of them so I've still not had a clean lap yet so I'm going to get back on the track and see if I can try and set some decent lap times right now I can actually show you but I think we're last at the minute because we fell off on every single lap and there you go we're right at the bottom there so uh, we've got work to do this isn't my best track so I know I'm up against it so I need to try and find some time and try and improve and that needs to happen right now so let's go on track and uh, let's try and improve our lap times Ooh, that's close. I'm actually on a pretty okay lap here. Tiny fastest by three tenths. Now make that one tenth. We've uh, was half a second up in sector one, but we've dropped that time over over the lap. But I reckon this lap should be good enough. Let's try and end it on a high if we can. Nice something on the brakes here. Into the final corner, which is kind of a double apex left to be honest. It's kind of two corners. Nice and easy on the power. There we go. Now we go flat through the kink up to the line. That's a strong end. Let's see what we do. 43-2. There we go. That lap should be good enough for Q2, but um, it's definitely not my best track. I really don't feel that comfortable around here, but there we go. 43-2, that should be okay for Q2. So let's start with the qualifying. Let's see how things go. Okay, so good news. We're straight into Q2, so panic avoided, crisis averted, so to speak, in practice, which is good. But um, the pace doesn't feel good. I mean, um, 
I, well, I say the pace. I, feel, I don't feel good around here. The pace, it seems to. I seem to have okay pace, but I don't feel that confident around this circuit. And I, I did crash a lot in practice, so I think it's going to be a very tricky. I think qualifying is going to be okay, but I think the race could be a different story. But first of all, let's tackle qualifying. Let's try and hook it up on one more good lap and try and get on pole if we can here and uh, really try and have a good session. Oh, that's the corner. I hate. I can't ever do that one. I just can't see where the corner is. I don't know where to break. I don't know when to start turning. Downshifting the whole thing, I just hate that corner so much. By the way, then here we go towards the end of our first banker here. Mark is currently faster with the 45 0, that's not accurate or representative at all of what the big boys can do, so we should comfortably go top for now. Let's see what it is up to the line, and it's a 43 6. So it's a lap time Vignale has managed to pull off in practice, so that's not too bad. It's a good opener, a little bit hot to turn one there, that's going to cost me some time. But let's keep going. We know we can do a 43-2, but this app kind of is in the bin already, to be honest. It's not been a good one, so I'm going to treat this as a bit of an experimental slash a cooldown lap, and uh, we'll go again next time around. Oh, four tenths up. I'm so sorry, always into there. I've actually managed to find quite a bit of time through that middle sector, which is where I struggle the most. Now we've got to try and keep it together for the rest of the lap, but I feel like I'm on the limit already. Every corner feels like the front end is going to let go from underneath, but still we're looking good here to improve already, even though I wasn't really meaning to a little bit wide there just uh, got distracted there by my phone for a second but let's try and finish this up and try and improve if we can still plenty of time on the clock six minutes to go and I'm waiting for the AI to really start setting their true lap times through the final couple of corners here on the power nice and gradually a little bit wide there to be fair not the best exit but it will do 43-4 it's a small improvement let's keep going bit wide there but we're going to keep going though there wasn't too much of a extension this time we've actually got that one quite nicely to be fair we've really sorted that, that corner out a bit there keep it nice and tight through the right let the bike run out wide here oh, that's a little bit wide I tried to straighten it up too much we're looking okay though that's going to be a corner cut and a half though and um, we're, st we're still up but not the best line of the back straight I'm going to lose time here along the entire back straight Definitely not my best track, I just can't seem to get a really smooth, clean lap together, which is annoying. But still, somehow, they seem to be effective into the final couple of corners, and I always go very wide compared to the AI. And I would like to come in for that late apex, very, very tight on the kerb, through the kink. This time we don't run wide, out the final corner, up to the line. 43-0, that's our strongest lap of the weekend so far. I reckon there's a 42 in there somewhere, I'm going to keep going, and uh, push for it if I can. I'm going to have to tackle Kyle Crutch though, in terms of traffic this lap. There we go, around the outside, a little bit of contact, we're going to run wide, hopefully we should dispatch our crutch flow there, oh, that's going to ruin my, my line, yep, that's going to be abandoning the lap, we'll go again next time around, oh actually I'm going to come to the pit lane and get some fresh tyres on, oh no, I'm trying so hard to improve but I can't seem to get it together, half a second down, looks like we're not going to improve it on my final attempt, and it's going to be the end of the session. I'm going to try and finish the lap anyway so I can finish strong. But that 43 0 looks locked in and set in stone to be honest at this point. Four and a couple of corners then. Let's try and see if we can sort it out. Looks like we are good for pole though at the final corner then on the power, getting a good exit up to the line. And it's actually pretty close, but we don't really improve. We found a lot of time in that final sector though, but qualifying is done. Okay, so looking at the final qualifying results, we have got pole position ahead of Valentino Rossi and Andrea Dovizioso there. Marvin Vignales P4, Mark Marquez P5, and Joamir P6 with Rins, Petrucci, and Miller rounding out the top now. But the championship rivals all crucially inside the top five with Rossi being the wild card in there in the top five. With that being said, let's see if we can try and convert this pole position into a race win as we jump into the race for round 14 for the Aragon GP. 
Here we are live from the MotoGP class starting grid, where riders and engineers are talking over the last few details before the start of the race. Indeed it is race time here for the Aragon GP here in Spain. The pressure is on and we need to try and perform it here today as we see a glitched helmet there of I believe I want to say uh, Peko Bagnaya with their cap stuck in between but either way we're going to jump into things here first of all we're going to change the tyres and we're going to go for the medium hard because I don't feel that confident around here and I want to have tyres for the long haul this race we start from pole position the question is can we convert it to another race win can we try and put the pressure on Dovi in the championship let's find out it's time for the race but first let's run you through the full grid have taken their place on the starting grid and everything is ready to start the race. Just a few seconds to go and the lights at the Aragon track will signal the start of the race. Right, here we go. Clutch pulled. First gear selected for the Aragon GP. Lights on. Lights off and away we go. Let's try and get a good start. Off the line, we're off okay. Dobby gets a great start of the bandages is that we're on the outside here for turmoil, which is not where you want to be. As we get swallowed up there by the pack, we're going to have the inside though for turn two. We're going to power back past Petrucci there. Can we get that on the inside of Vinales? A little bit of contact, but no way through just yet. We're going to get a good exit though and get the run on Vinales and Jack Miller. And we're going to go down the inside of the pair of them. We've got Valentino Rossi there very, very wide in the Yamaha there. And we're going to take that position as well. Down the inside of Vinales here. We're covering positions like crazy here at the minute. As uh, Dobby leads the way, Marquez put the pressure on in P2. Dry Mir P3. A little bit sideways there on the exit of the chicane and now speaking of the chicane here this is going to be very tricky through here the AR like to really recklessly dive but be careful Vinales there try and have a look but we keep an ass tight line now we go through this very very tricky left of probably the trickiest corner on the circuit to be honest one that I can never seem to get 100% right which feeds into the next left which is also just as tricky because it, the brake zone is completely unsighted and you don't know when to start braking at least I don't know how to start braking anyway but luckily we do pretty good there and we actually get away relatively unscathed. So now we're coming towards the end of the lap and this is now where I'll start to show a bit of performance, which is good. Dry Mir doing a good job there, P3. Marquez doing me a favour by getting to P1 and overtaking Dovi, to be fair. And there we go, onto the back straight. And that is a solid opening lap, to be fair. Even though we started first, being on the outside line, it doesn't do you any favours into the very tricky turn one here. And I knew I was kind of going to lose some places, but we've, uh, we've survived. And now we've made up the places. We're now P4. And we're right in this race. Marcus is doing me a favour by taking first place and uh, not letting Dobby score maximum points. And now the race has officially got underway. We get a good exit out the final corner. And this race is now on. Let's try and work towards catching up to Dry Mir. Sector 1 is my strong sector. So if we're going to make something happen, it's going to be through here. So let's try and work towards that. Oh, Dry Mir is a bit hot into there. And uh, Dobby's out of shape as well. But nothing's going to majorly change here. We are going to get very close to Dry Mir now through this long left. I'm going to try and get the power down a bit earlier there. Just try and get underneath him if I can. Mir just stays in front though. I'm going to have to get on the brakes a little bit earlier there. I'm very wide onto the curb, which is always dangerous, which is what I had pretty much all of my crashes in practice. So we're going to stay behind, but then we're going to get a fantastic run through the right. We're going to have a look down the inside of Dry Mir here. It's late, but we're going to go for it inside for the next corner. Dry Mir holding it on the outside line, but we're just going to squeeze him out and take that position for P3. There we go. We're going to get a nice toe from Dobby as well. And there we go. Third place onto the podium now. Although Mir is coming back at me here, but is it enough? He's going to be down the inside. I'm going to go very early on the apex to try and shut off the overtake attempt. Stay low this time. I don't normally stay this low, but I'm going to try and stop Mir from coming back at me. We get a fantastic run, actually, out of the final corner. And that's going to give me the run on Dobby into turn one. Late on the brakes. Past my championship rival down the inside. I'm a little bit hot on the brakes. Then I'm going to run wide. And Dovi goes back past. John Mir trying to look for a move. We're going to go around the outside of Dovi again here. And we're going to take that position back. Fantastic move. And we are into second place in this race now. Can we stay there? That's the question. We'll have to find out. But for now, it's been an explosive start to this race. We're doing a good job. And uh, we've got in front of Dovi, which is the main thing. I don't really care. We finished in second, to be honest. I don't care if Marcus wins. I just want to keep Dovi behind me 
a little bit hot there into that right hand there, but we should be okay to keep it in front. And there we go. Right, P2 it is. Let's try and hold on to this position now. Okay, then we've got a little bit of gap to Dobby, and the pressure now is starting to mount on Mark Marquez in his home Grand Prix here once again. The one of four Spanish Grand Prix in the calendar. And uh, we're starting to get close here. Can we get a good one out the final corner? That will be maybe where we get a run on Marquez. That's a fantastic exit. Really, really good exit. To be fair, Marquez has got a good one as well for, you know, for, in terms of what the AI could do. But we are starting to get close here as we, I believe, we chalk up a fight up at the Grand Prix. And we're starting to put the pressure on the multiple time world champion here. And this is where I'm stronger. Sector 1, I just have so much more performance than the AI do. And I have so much more pace. You can see that we just visibly gain so much through all the corners. And uh, there's not much anyone else can we really do about it, to be honest. We just have the lines all, you know, put down and synced up. And it's really working for us on the power there nice and early. We're going to get a good exit. And get within range of Marquez here. He gets off the gas a little bit. A little bit of contact there. We're going to go down the inside. A little bit hot, though. Marquez baits me in and gets the move back. But we're going to keep the pressure on here as we race down towards the chicane. This isn't a strong point for me. I'm kind of scared into this corner because the bike feels like it's going to go every single time. That's a good exit though, again, as we go through the kind of tricky right, I'm going to take a big chunk of speed off to focus on the exit. That's pretty good. Keeping the pressure on Mark, is, it does help when you've got kind of a reference point around the, the circuit, you know, in terms of braking. When, when I was in practice, I was by myself and I didn't have any reference points, but having someone to kind of follow does help in terms of, you know, seeing where the brake zones are and being able to push more or less accordingly. But the pressure is on here. We are really... Um, trying to stay on Marcus's rear tyre and that's a good exit out of there that's going to give us the run along the entire back straight look at this really good exit we've got the run on Mark we're going to pull to the inside on the brakes who's the bravest we're braver than him we're very shallow here we are going to get it slowed down can I keep it down Marcus down the inside again he's going to come back at me I can't quite get the power down and it's side by side here with Mark Marquez across the line as we go on to the next lap, I'm on the outside, which is not where you want to be. So Marquez will take that for now. He's a little bit uh, compromised through turn one, taking a shallow line. I'm going to focus on my line through turn two. We get a nice wide run. I'm going to go down the inside here into turn three. Fantastic move on Marquez, although he's kind of backing me here. I'm just going to block him off. But no, Marquez still down the inside here. Side by side into turn five. I've got to leave him the room. He just swaps across my front. We tap the back of him there. Down the inside though into turn seven. There it is. Getting that move done. Just pushing Marcus wide there. He's trying to go around the outside. Outside line never really works in MotoGP that often. He's back down my inside though into the chicane. This is what I'm worried about. The AI tend to be quite aggressive here. Side by side still with him. He's trying to go around the outside all the way. But I'm going to stop him from doing that. Get it slowed down there. Let's not run too deep. There we go. Okay then now we're in front. Can we stay in front? That's the question. I don't really know where to break now. I've got no reference. And Mark is straight back down the inside. That's fair enough. We almost lose the rear tyre there on the exit. That was a little bit scary. Marquez is wide. Going up the hill. Down the inside of Mark Marquez here. Aggressive move. But Marquez has got the inside onto the back straight. We're going to switch back underneath. What a fantastic battle this is. But we're going to get the exit and we're going to get the drag. Now we're side by side, neck and neck with the HRC. And Marcus, to be fair, you know, pull him back there on the straight. We're going to take the inside line, though. That's a poor, poor line there. We're very shallow. I'm going to take my usual line, then. I'm going to revert to the original exit with the wide entry. And there we go. We're going to get it this time. Fantastic exit. And this time, we power past Marquez. That's what I'm talking about. But Marquez, though, he's not letting me go. He's back down the inside. I really thought I had it there, but he's not letting this one go without a fight. And then we're going to have to try and get back past one more time here. We're going to get the exit. As we got the inside into turn three. Through turn four. Now Marcus is going to get the switch back. But let's see if this time we can hold it in front of him. No, no, we can't. I don't think we can. We're on the outside. Through five. Side by side through six. A little bit of contact there once again. I'm going to keep it low for seven. There we go. Marcus is wide there. That should give us a position. Into the chicane. Let's go nice and low. Oh, that curve almost spat me off there, but this time we've got it, and the move is done. Finally, we're ahead of Mark Marquez. That was a good lap, 43.2. Near qualifying pace, pretty much. That's what we need to open up the gap, which we are starting to do now. 43.3, very consistent pace. Very happy with that. 
currently Dobby's P4, Mir John Mir's actually P3. So this is working out beautifully for us. Dobby not performing as well as he could do around here. That Ducati obviously not working great. And that's uh, giving us the opportunity here to really outscore him by some you know, big points here today. And I'm really starting to dominate this race now. My pace is very, very strong and unforgiving. I'm very, very impressed with myself. I've got to say, after practice, I really thought I'd be in trouble, but I'm actually surprised. I, I know I, I'll do well most weekends, but I'm really impressed how much I've pulled out the bag this weekend. So i um, really, really happy with that. I don't normally um, show it, but I'm actually, I think I'm going, leave, I'm going to leave the practice crashes in the video um, for you guys to see it. I've made the decision now, kind of on the fly in the race, just because I think it's interesting. Meanwhile, there, I just saw Vinales. I would take Dobby for P4, so Dobby really is struggling here. You can see he just goes back past, and then literally again, they switch places, so that battle's ongoing, so you never know, it could still change. Right, last lap, let's bring it home. My tyres are a little bit knackered, so I've got to be careful with the tyres here, but currently Dovia is still P5 here, so this is looking very good for us in a championship. Let's hope it stays that way by the end of the race. Oh my god, I almost went down there. Tyres really don't feel good at the minute. I really am on the limit here. I'm not even pushing there, just I don't have that confidence. The front feels like it's going to go at every single corner, and the rear doesn't give me much confidence either. But finally, we've made it through that tricky section, and we should be home and dry. Then here we go. Let's bring this one home. Marcus, to be fair, hasn't dropped off too much more than what he did originally, but we managed to get the gap out early on and push. That's why I go for the hard rear so I can lean on the tyres a bit. But here we go for the final corner. That front is really not working anymore now. It just feels completely gone. But through the final corner now, taking it easy here, and we're going to win the Aragon. GP from pole position for a race win and that is what I'm talking about for the championship big big gains now we've got to find out to see where Dovi finished because he was P5 on, at the start of the lap so let's see if he finished there or did he finish P4 and uh, pit Vinales to the line so there we have it then Dovi did indeed beat Vinales to the line unfortunately for us so uh, still P4 that's more than I expected John me on the podium that's a surprise uh, finish there we got Marquez in second and then obviously uh, Rossi P6 so the full order is myself Marquez me Dovi Vinales Rossi Rins Lorenzo Crutchlow and Iannone in the top 10 and then scoring the remaining points we have Zarco Petrucci Miller Bagnaia and Paul Espargaro and then outside of the points we do have Rabat Equatoraro Sirin Oliveira Nakagami Espargaro Morbidelli and finally Cal Abram there at the back of the field and in terms of what that race means for the Riders Championship we retake first place and we are four points clear of Dovi in the championship also Marcus and Vinales switch round and uh, they're still very much mathematically in contention but they need to get a big result very very soon in terms of the team championship or should I say the constructors we actually re-overtake Ducati there for first place so that's good news so we're back up into P1 in the constructors and uh, we're 11 points clear at the top Yamaha and Honda still within reach so we've got to be careful for those guys and in terms of the team championship, we remain in P4. 25 points clear of Suzuki and Yamaha. 26 points clear at the top of the table with Vinales and Rossi scoring those consistent points. With that being said, guys, that is going to be it for this episode of the MotoGP crew. If you did enjoy it, then please do drop a like on the video and also get subscribed for daily Formula 1 and MotoGP content and turn on notifications to not miss a video from me. And finally, check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video very soon. But until then, it's goodbye from me.